Hello everybody, it is I, the Willowigi Big Mac, and today I'll be doing a let's play of Forgotten Worlds. So, if you don't know what Forgotten Worlds is, this is an old Capcom arcade game. If I remember correctly, it's one of the first ones made for their CPS-1 arcade board. Along the other two games that that utilize this board, when it when it came out, I believe was Ghosts and Goblins and Strider. But like but like what the name implies, eh, the public barely remembers this game. But I consider this game a hidden gem. So we got that dude. Don't know his name. Did you find the guy? I'll finish you today for sure. Alright, funny voices aside. This is this is your usual shoot 'em up. So those blue things I'm collecting are called Zenies. This is this game's currency. And you'll be asking why? Well, this game has a shot. Now the main gimmick of this shoot 'em up is that you can actually you can just turn at any angle. Because this because the original arcade machine for this game had a had a little turn dial. When you push down on it, you shoot, and when you, when you of course turn it, you change the angle. Now, of course, I died. Considering this is an arcade game, every time you uh, every time you enter in to uh, after you die, all the enemies die. But you essentially have infinite lives. Now, for the turn dial, I bind it to my vertical mouse movement. For some reason, it wouldn't let me do a horizontal, but Hey, there's the shop. Alright, let me let me stop it there. So the lady in the middle, that's that's Sylvie. That, that's the shopkeeper. Um she honestly of all the characters in this game, she's probably the most recognizable. That's sad to say. So anyway, you see a bunch of different items. The first three items you see there are power-ups, the where you have a little like mini thing that'll help that'll shoot other things, so like missiles, fire, or like bullets in different directions. The armor is essentially like an armor power up. Although, although when you run into an enemy, you basically act like Arthur from Ghosts and Goblins, where your armor just basically gets destroyed clean off. However, you take no damage from any bullets, so that's kind of the plus side. The, the med kit right there is essentially it heals you. Um, then the little or then the little thing. Then the other thing there, right next to the med kit, is essentially a power up that makes you move faster. Then below med the med kit, which looks like a little newspaper, the whole gimmick with that is that Sophie knows uh knows the weaknesses of the bosses, but she but she requires you to pay for a fee in order to reveal it. So in this case, I'll I'll buy this. I'll go high speed. And now also buy the V cannon because the, and you can only buy one of these at a time. But as you may see, now I'm a lot more faster as I die because I had like no hit points left. Yeah. Now, while this game is forgotten by by the public, Capcom still somewhat remember this game. Like one good example is that is that like if there's ever like a classic bundle where they put in their classic game that they first made, of course this will be in there. But the best example would be Namco Cross Capcom and it's and it's. Quote unquote predecessors, uh, Project Quasco 1 and 2. Well, technically, they weren't. Technically, there's no references in 2, but you get the point. So, in, so Namco across Capcom, the two, the two soldiers, definitely named Player 1 and Player 2 soldiers, te technically they have no name, because considering in Marvel vs. Capcom 1, he, uh, the Player 1 unknown soldier goes up as a, uh, as a, uh, as in uh, six, so so going off track from what I'm talking about for a minute. This boss is generally easy. You just stay in one spot and you just shoot it, um, and you just power through the damage. 
Now, as I was saying, um, but not only the two unknown soldiers are playable. Oh, look, I beat the boss. You cannot stop me with... I don't know what that is, but whatever. Anyway, as I was saying... Um, not only the two unknown soldiers are playable Namco across Capcom, but Sophie was also playable. And Sophie also reappears in Project Cross 2 as a, uh, as, as a, you know, as part of the shop. However, she does sell out info of the heroes, like she does in games for the, uh, for the, for the bosses, so, there's that. Speaking of which, speaking of Sophie, there's, there's her shop. Alrighty, so we have her first... Um, HP upgrade. We have, we also have, we have a, we have a weapon upgrade, and we have the best, uh, item in the game. She's hearing this one, shoots in all, shoots in all eight directions. This is very useful, which means, because honestly, I can just, honestly, I don't even have to move around, I can just, like, hold, uh, hold the shoot button. And like, and just do that, but of course those little worm things will come out of the ground. Now I mentioned that there's a player 2 unknown soldier. And that's, so, so while player 1 has this little long range beam thing, the player 2 soldier has like a short range shotgun type of thing. So, it's kind of, it's kind of weird that Capcom did that, but, but then again, I'm not playing as the, uh, I'm not playing as the player 2 soldier, so I could care less. But yeah, like... Like, I really wish, like, the public, like, knows about this game, because I feel like this game would be extremely popular. Like, I know Capcom's doing a lot of reboots lately, like... Like, you know, Res like Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil 3... Oh, actually, well, actually, those were remakes, not reboots. But still, but still, I wish this game like gets like a reboot or like a remake or something. That would be pretty cool. But yeah. Like like out the three like out the first three games for CPS one, this is the like this is the most forgotten. Okay, so this is the hardest boss in the game. Well, that's step number one for the hardest boss. I just beat the world's hardest boss. Alright, jokes aside. Ha, huh. those dragon is no match for us. It didn't take much to get rid of him. Man, I love doing dumb voices. So, we're on the stage is what I call the Imperial March stage, because the music kind of sounds like the Imperial March from Star Wars. Now, now, now for the story of this game, I... All I can get is like, there's this evil space dude that destroyed the world, and these two soldiers from Earth are just going out of their way to, uh... Uh, you know, I'll buy the armor. But like, they, uh, big evil space dude, uh, destroyed the world, and then the two unknown soldiers go out and, uh, fight, uh, fight the... Like the uh bloody bastard. And I and my soldier and my armor's lost. I'm gonna uh gonna I might add edit in how long the armor lasts for, just for funsies. So Kind of like in Final Fight and 
and uh, Punisher and whatever uh, beat em ups Capcom have. Um, at the pulse of some hill, you can press attack twice, and it'll do like a powerful like, attack. However, it's kind of subtle, a uh, sub, yeah, subtle, but you. And you like don't really know if it actually works or not, so so I'm probably not gonna be using that too much. I mean, after all, I'm pretty much good. So so world so there's three worlds in this game. There's dust world, which is which is what we're in right now. There's what I call Egyptian world because everything looks like Egyptian uh, stuff. And then, and then the third, then the third one is just, I honestly don't know how to describe it. And we're getting on to the, fun, the final boss for World 1. So we got, so we basically got, this is, I'm just going to call this guy uh, Space Samurai. But he's, again, he's also very simple to deal with. You just have to break his, uh... Yeah, basically you have to break his armor. Although, these don't really do a lot to win. Like, you mainly have to attack his, uh, face. I don't see, I don't see even this will work, just going up to him, uh... His face like that. There we go. Now, every time you defeat a ball, to pick up the messages, you earn a bunch of bonuses, depending, depending on how fast or how many times you die. So, that's decent. Did the war god really die? No doubt about it. The king of gods must be saying his prayers now. Okay, so that must have been the war god. Well, that's about it for today. So, uh, I'll see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>